Well, bless the Lord. I am so glad to be with you tonight. I love the Wednesday night Bible studies. I just enjoy it. I enjoy sharing the word with you as we fellowship in the word of God. It's just, just so enriching. And, and, you know, and with that enrichment, it brings renewal and transformation. It's just such a blessing. And I know that it's blessing you as well. Well, tonight we're going to talk about unlimited blessings. In this hour, in this day of so much chaos, so much turmoil, uh, loss, pain <laughs> that's going on in the world today. But you know what? If you begin to focus on the word of God and not looking at the facts of this life, I'm telling you right now, it'll take you into a place of renewal and transformation that will be simply mind blowing. That's why tonight we're going to talk about unlimited blessings of God. You got to get this down in your spirit. What? The word of God. And if you will be begin to just enshrine it in your heart, oh, it will keep you in this hour and give you blessings unlimitedly. Unlimited blessing. A Psalms 107 and verse 9. While I'm talking, the last few weeks I've been talking on God's word about blessing his people, prosperity. You need to write these scriptures down. You need to keep up with them. You need to play this over and over because you know we're right there on Carol Dixon YouTube TV. You can play this over. You can take your notes. It's nothing like taking notes though because your retention level is increased when you write it down. That's, that, that's just so. It is so. And so we, we've got unlimited blessings from God. And I'm on assignment here with sharing with you during this hour that the facts are saying the complete opposite. God is speaking to you of what his word says. And you get this down in your heart. Oh, it will cause your expectation to arise. And the manifestation of what God has promised shall come to pass. So let's start out tonight looking at Psalms 107. Verse 9, I'm, I'm going to go through scriptures. Yes, I'm going to speak the word. Amen. And it is going to impact and change your life. Yes. Psalms 107, verse 9. For he satisfieth the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. Mm. See, total commitment, total submission to God. This is what God wants. And he said, if you do it, it will produce unlimited blessings in your life. Yes, yes, commitment and submission, totality to God. It will produce unlimited blessings in your life. I have to say it again, because I tell you one thing. If, if you look at Psalms 107 and 9, this verse lets you know that God wants to bless you, that God wants to fill your life with goodness. Amen. According to this word. And according to the word, so be it. Glory to God. I found out that the sooner you submit your life totally to God, the sooner that you do that, you'll begin to see the manifestation of his promises in your life. A lot of times you say, oh, it's not happening. It's not happening. Totally submit. Totally surrender to the Lord. I'm telling you right now, he'll produce it. It will happen. The unlimited blessings of God will flow in your life. God's complete. Oh, yes, he'll do it. Oh, yes. And when you complete his servitude to him, he'll put you on the road to success. Okay. All right. It happened to Abraham. Mm-hmm. When he fully obeyed God, he was promised that, that God had said that he was going to do in his life. Glory to God. Mm-hmm. And he's promised to do the same for his seed. Oh, yes. You got to fully obey him. Yeah, it, Genesis 24 and 1 says, And Abraham was old and well stricken in age, and the Lord blessed Abraham in all things. I love that. Goodness of God was on Abraham's life so much that others recognized it. They saw it. And that's what God wants to do in your life. He wants to bless you in all things. And he wants God's goodness to be seen upon your life. And other people see it as well. Genesis 24 and 35. And the Lord hath blessed my master greatly. And he is become great. And he hath given him flocks and herds and silver and gold and men servants and maid servants and camels and asses. Oh, see the goodness of God. The goodness of God brings unlimited blessings. And others see it on your life. And it comes from being totally submitted and committed to God. 
servitude. Then I want to look in Galatians. Where it let you know that we're heirs and we're entitled. You are. You are. You're an heir. You are entitled to the same blessings as Abraham in your life. Yeah, I'm sticking with scripture. Galatians 3 and 29, because it's the word that will come from the inside out, become flesh and dwell among you. Galatians 3 and 29, if, if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. That's word. That's Bible. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And then I saw in Genesis also where Abraham was not only rich, but it said he was exceedingly rich. Genesis 13 and 2. Abraham was very rich in livestock, in silver, and in gold. Oh, my. God just keeps on, keeps on, keeps on. Unlimited blessings. His life was filled with it. Just unlimited blessings. So can yours. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so can I, if we follow God's instruction. See, that's the key. You got to follow God's instruction. That's why the Holy Spirit is just a blessing to have the Holy Spirit. Oh, yes. He says, you know what? He'll speak to you from what the Father is saying. That's what he's going to say. He said, those things that I hear, that's what I'm going to tell you. <laughs> you know who he ain't around. God the Father, Jesus, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, they're Trinity. Abraham's life was filled with blessings. And, and, and God wants to do that for you. God wants you to live a life of abundance. He wants that for you. Glory to God. He wants you to be blessed with every good thing, but it requires total commitment. I'm telling you, people, the enemy have you looking at it as though it's difficult, a hard thing to do. Not at all. Not at all. The key is for you to make up your mind to do it. Amen. All right. He wants to bless you with every good thing. Deuteronomy 29 and 9. Keep therefore the words of this covenant and do them that ye may prosper in all that you do. Oh, all. Nothing's left out. Mm -hmm. Then Psalms 34 and 10. But they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Jesus, I love it. See, see the unlimited. Unlimited blessing. The key to it is to seek God. You seek him and you not things. That's the key right there. You seek God and not things. He wants your heart to be set on him. He does. He loves it. Because why? He got a plan. He's got the plan. <laughs> He's the one that no matter what the enemy does, he cannot be successful in any attack that he launches against you. Oh, yes. You seek him. Mm hmm Not things. Seek him. He wants you to seek him. He wants you to seek his ways. He wants you to begin. Yeah, he wants you to seek it. Seek his ways. He wants you to begin to make his ways a priority in your life. Amen. Then Proverbs 7 and 2. Keep my commandments and live. And my law as the pupil of thine eye. Oh, my goodness, I don't care what fact is before me. I do not care what these natural eyes see. I'm going to have God's law right there. Uh -huh. God's word, that's what he's saying. That's what, what God has said that will override what is going on in the world today. So you make that his word, your, God's word. You make that your prize. Mm -hmm. Make it the most precious thing in your life. Oh, hallelujah. Hmm. Colossians 3 and 2. You know this verse. Set your affections on things above and not on things in the earth. Don't do it. Whatever's on this earth, don't, don't, don't even let it. Don't let it tug on your heart. And it's a process. Oh, listen. Mm -mm. I'm talking to me and you. Oh, yes. It's a process. Because, you know, what? Every time you hit an area that you haven't hit and you just conquered another area, you got to start all over in those steps of faith and begin to conquer every area of your life. Bring it all into subjection. Bring it all into submission. Bring it all into commitment. Bring it all into servitude to God. 
The more, the more important that you give to the word of God, the more you serve him and, and commit yourself to him, the more blessed you're going to be. Yeah, believe that. And will become. <laughs> Joshua 1 and 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Mm. Oh, God demands it. See, God, you see, see in this verse? See, do not let them depart out of your mouth, regardless to what the facts line up, the they and the we sayers say. I'm here to tell you right now. Don't let what God's word has said. What, what does law mean? Law means that that's what sets the rule. That's what you're supposed to obey. That's what you're supposed to yield to. Yeah, that's what you're supposed to give first place to. So this is what he's saying right here. Don't you let that. Uh-uh. Whatever's going on, you let your total commitment to God. Oh, glory to God. Oh, every day in your life. That this is a routine thing that you do. It's part of your habitual culture. It is routine for you. Every day. Not just on Sundays. Not just on Wednesday nights. This is every day. You have to be willing to humble yourself in, in God's ways instead of living your way. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Can't live on your own, people. No, you can't do it. You need God. Why not just go on and serve him? Give over total and get all these unlimited blessings flowing in your life. Oh, I tell you, it's a win-win with God. Oh, yes, it is. Proverbs 22 and 4. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches, honor, and life. Oh, I know that's so, and you do too. You know when Solomon, out of humility, you know, after he had given that big offering, God said, ask what I shall give unto you. That's, and his hard attitude reflected his answer. You, 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 when people open their mouths and begin to talk, you can locate right where they are. And the words that came out of the heart of Solomon, when God asked, ask what I should give you. He said, I want wisdom that I have the knowledge to know how to lead all these people that you have given unto me. And God answered and said, not only will I give you wisdom and the knowledge, but I'm going to give you riches and honor and wealth. Glory to God. On the left and on the right. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Ah, all kinds of, you have the right heart attitude. Your attitude can bring such favor to you that you could not get with a dollar sign. You better know it. Glory to God. But you got to be willing to humble yourself instead of insisting on your own way. Because by humility, that's how the riches and the honor comes into your life. The amplified version of that verse says, the reward of humility and the reverent and worshipful fear of the Lord is riches and honor in life. Isn't that good? Riches and honor and life. Oh, God is so good. Mm, God actually gets great pleasure in blessing your life, in my life. He gets great pleasure in that. Hmm. Psalms 35, 27. Oh, you better enshrine these scriptures in your heart. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Ha! Woo! That's good. Mm. God delights in being your provider. He, it delights God. It delights God to provide for you. Luke 12 and 32. Fear not, little flock, for it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Oh, 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 this is so good. Oh, fear not. No matter what the enemy is doing to try to rock your world. Fear not. Fear not. 
little flock. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the key to the kingdom. In other words, it may be something that you're in a dilemma over. It may be something that you say, I don't have the answer to this. It may be that that you say, I don't even know what to do. God will give you the key. The key to the key. Wisdom. He'll give you what to do. Glory to God. You just submit to him. You're committed unto it. Lay it at his feet. Watch him take it and fix it. Not sometime. Every time. He fixed the whole thing. He's working it all out. Hey, glory to God. Hey, 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 hey. Glory to God. Then I read that in the New King James Version. And it says that we'll just put him first in our lives. Then we won't have to worry or fret about any of our needs. We just put him first. Just put him first. Mm -hmm. That's Matthew 6, you know, in 33. Seek ye first the, uh, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. So just put God first. First, make him first. I'm going to give God his tithe. I'm going to give God his offerings. I'm going to get into that systematic giving. God may be speaking to me about a strategy, strategically how he wants me to sow. And then there'll be those times that, oh, I just feel the unction to do it spontaneously so. And then there'll be those times that, oh, this is a sacrifice. I, I had this for something else. But I feel led of God. I sense the spirit moving me to do this, to do that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. If you dare to do it, put him first. Then the Bible says, therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For after all these things, the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly father knows what you need. Mm. He knows everything, all of these things that you have need of. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all these things, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? Uh -huh. All these things shall be added unto you. Oh, God stands ready to bless you beyond your imaginations. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. Hallelujah. First Corinthians, I'm almost finished here. This, I got to see, you got to be able to uh, uh, eat this. So I'm not going to give you too much. You got to be able to eat all this. You got you to eat this. 1 Corinthians 2 and 9. For I have not seen, and ear have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things, look at that, things, which God hath prepared for them that love him, them that will serve him, them that will commit to him, them that will humble it. Uh-huh. Say what he says. Ah, the things that he's got prepared. He let you know. That lets you know what said things. That, that's not about things on the inside. This is on the outside. I'm gonna manifest. I'm gonna bless. I'm gonna all oh, unlimited blessings for you. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Who have you tapped into everything God has prepared for you? Sly. Think about that. <laughs> Cause I don't think so. Uh-uh. I don't think so. Mm-mm. But there's no reason why we can't. Oh, no. It, God just keeps on. He's got blessings that you haven't even tapped into that he's got there for you. Because every day, it's a process. We learn more how to yield. We learn more how to be humble. We learn more how to obey the Holy Spirit. Oh, yes. God keeps stretching us. He keeps stretching us. He keeps stretching us. <laughs> oh, glory to God. You can get there. Mm -hmm. Just get into the flow of what God desires. You can get there. Oh, unlimited blessings. You don't have to be in lack. You don't have to be in poverty. God's word is right there. Oh, that's all you need. Get on that word. And I tell you, God will just start making a way. God will just start opening doors that have been closed against you. God will start making a way. No, oh, he's able to make all grace abound toward you. That you having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. Look at God. Look at God. Uh, now, the American Heritage College Dictionary defines abound as to be great in number or amount. To be fully supplied or filled. Woo! God wants us to be fully supplied. Where there is no lack. That's where God wants you and I. Proverbs 15 and 16. I'm going to close out. 
in the house of the righteous is much treasure. Mm, mm, mm. Glory to God. You know, God is always true to his covenant. And if you just dare to believe it, if you will dare to walk in it, if you dare to obey it, then there's no limit, not, not any limit to what God will do to bless you. There's no limit to what God will do in your life. No limit. Unlimited blessings in obeying God. God has blessings just for you. Tap in. Come on, give God glory. Give him some praise. Oh, you got enough to eat to ooh, take you to another level. Thank you, Lord, of blessings in this earth. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Unlimited blessings. Hallelujah. Give God glory. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Ooh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, it's offering time. It's time to give him the glory. It's time to give God praise. It's time to lift him up. It's time to glorify him. It's time to submit to him. It's time to commit to him. It's time to humbly serve him. Oh, yes, it's time to obey God in your giving. It's time to be blessed. Unlimited blessings as you obey the Lord. He has them for you. You got that word. You go over there. To bless your soul. And then you what? Put it in your heart. Put it in your heart. <laughs> hey, glory. Hallelujah. God has blessings with your name on it. God is so good. Obey the Lord. Oh, they've got it at the bottom of the screen. All you've got to do is obey. It's just right there at your fingertips. It's just right there for you to obey. Oh, glory to God. I have not seen. Ear have not heard. Neither has it entered into your heart. The things that God has prepared for you. Oh, tap in. Tap in. God is so good. He's truly worthy to be praised. I thank God for you. It was so good being with you tonight. I want you to know unlimited blessings are there for you. Tap in. God bless.